Hey, I'm John Cannell, and today on Preppy Kitchen, I'm giving you a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to carve a turkey. So let's get started. First off, as soon as your turkey comes out of the oven, you need to let it rest for 30 minutes. If you carve into it right now, the juices will drain out, it'll be dry, and you'll be sad. So 30 minutes. Once 30 minutes has passed, it's time to get your turkey and get to work. To carve a turkey, you'll want a flexible boning knife that's about five inches or a large chef's knife. In either case, it should be very sharp. So grab your sharpener and get to work. Now you wanna transfer your turkey to a large cutting board. This is a big one. Chances are your turkey's trussed, so we want to remove any twine or skin that's holding the legs together. Now using your sharp knife, we wanna cut through the skin connecting the breast to the leg. If I wasn't doing this for camera, I'd have the legs facing me. It makes it much easier. You wanna have a nice clean break, so we want to go all the way to the joint and then separate the joint out. If you turn the turkey upside down, it's fairly easy to find the joint. You're gonna to wanna to pop the leg out, you'll hear a little popping sound. Just like that. We're gonna set this aside and repeat for the other leg. And we thank the turkey for all that it gives us. Remove that, all the connecting tissue, that's what it is, as well as in the back. Find the joint and pop, just like that. If your turkey's leg is really connected, go ahead and use your kitchen shears to cut through the joint. I'm doing such a good job. Next, we wanna remove the wings, so pull it away from the breast, and we're gonna cut any of the connecting skin and meat. Cut close to the joint so you have a nice separation. There we go. You might have to use your scissors to cut the tendons. Is this gory? If you have any aromatics in your turkey, you can set them aside. Lots of uses for that, including stock. Just cut towards the joint and pop it out. These tendons need to be cut. Whenever you're breaking down a turkey or chicken, kitchen shears really are your friend, so make sure you have those at the ready. Okay, obviously your turkey's gonna be hot when you're doing this. If you can't tolerate the heat, my hands can, go ahead and use a fork to manipulate things and you know touch sparingly. As you work, it's a good idea to keep your surface clean with some paper towels. Lots of things that we're not gonna be eating. So I make Thanksgiving dinner every single year and I actually enjoy it, but this was the part that stressed me out the most. I know a lot of people at home enjoy making food, but you consider this to be like a specialized skill. It really is not as long as you follow a few simple steps and do it in order. The main thing really is to let your turkey rest and then to find the points where your various cuts are joined to the body. Next up, we have the prized white meat. If you're doing this at home, the turkey will be facing you, but today I'm letting it face the camera. This is the keel bone right in the middle and you wanna cut the skin just down there. And now we can feel around and know where the breast is connecting. Using confident motions and not like going here and there, just separate the meat away from the bone. So if possible, you wanna keep that tenderloin piece connected to the breast, and here, it's coming away fairly nicely. I tell you, as long as your turkey is rested and cooked properly, this is very easy. Here we go. We have one large intact breast piece now. By the way, if you like my videos, make sure you hit that subscribe button. There's two new recipes every single week and always something delicious on the horizon. Okay, repeat that for the next breast. So separate it out. You're running your knife just along the ribs right until that meat comes off and we have one big, beautiful piece. There will be some meat that you miss in the first cuts. I never forget the oysters. They pop right out of the bottom. This is my favorite part of the turkey. It's so tender and delicious. The dark meat's full of flavor. You can remove the remaining meat and transfer that to a platter, or if you're planning on making a delicious turkey soup, I would put this all in a stock pot with the aromatics and some extra things, and then this meat will come right off and that'll be part of your soup. Up to you though. You could also freeze your carcass and make stock with it later. Chances are you're very busy and tired and not feeling like an extra project. So wrap it up, pop it in the freezer, 
And in the meantime, we can finish carving this turkey. I wanna separate the drumstick from the thigh, so do a little cut of the skin in between to where the joint is. Now you're gonna pull the two apart, and that'll expose the joint. And we can cut through the joint at this point. We find the joint, do a little cut, and it should pop away. Use kitchen shears to finish the process. The annoying part is the tendons are really holding the joints together. Just use your kitchen shears and give it a snip and it'll come right apart. Repeat that for the other leg. Pull it apart and we're gonna give it some cuts so we can get to the joint. Find the joint and give it a pop. And cut away any remaining meat. We have our leg and we have our thigh. We're gonna remove the bone from the thigh, so cut along the bottom on either side, and hopefully the meat just pulls away. If it's not, you can keep cutting. And now we have just the thigh meat. I just use these bones for my broth as well. Repeat that for the other thigh. You can kind of expose the meat And now we have a nice thigh. Now it's time to portion out the thigh meat. So it's up to you how big you want the pieces to be, but cut against the grain of the muscle. And just slice it up. You can keep the skin on or remove it. That's totally up to you. Repeat for both thighs. Perfect. Now slice the breast meat. This is the easiest one to do half inch thick slices or so. It's funny, this was a giant turkey and it doesn't seem like that much meat, but chances are you have a plethora of sides and really the meat is there, but not the star. At our house, it's the sweet potato casserole that everybody loves, which is one of the videos on the channel. Repeat for the second breast. The most important part is the presentation. It's probably for Thanksgiving that you're watching this video, so we're not gonna dump everything on the platter. Let's make it look nice by arranging the thigh meat in the center first. On either side of our platter, we're gonna have our breast meat. Keep it nicely arranged. And you can fan it out a little bit. Other breast. I'm just fanning them out so you have a little bit of contrast and you can see the skin and pieces. On one side have the wings, on the other side the two legs, and of course you can garnish with some of the herbs that you used today in the baking. So some sage is probably at hand, sprigs of thyme or rosemary. You can also garnish this with fresh cranberries, persimmons, figs, or citrus wedges, and it just gives you some color and a little bit of extra aromatics. And just like that, your turkey is on the platter looking amazing and you're ready to enjoy. I hope the step-by-step -step was helpful and that you're having a lovely stress-free celebration. And if you like my videos, hit that subscribe button and check out my Thanksgiving playlist.